So I've done multiple reports now on states, really blue states, that have now been taking people off the organ transplant list because they're refusing to get the jab. But now I have to add a red state to this conversation. And that state is South Carolina. And we're going to talk about what they have done. Absolutely disgusting. More on that in a second. The full report, guys. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, or the glasses because I'm blind. So yeah, South Carolina. I mean, I didn't think that I was going to have to bring this state up ever when talking about this subject. And, you know, let me just say, because I've done a lot of other videos in the past, like I mentioned about, you know, these individuals not getting their transplants, whether it's for kidney, whether it's for liver, whether it's for heart. And, you know, for those of you that, you know, want to get involved in this conversation, if for whatever reason, you can't leave a comment, because I got to tell you this, I mean, the other day I was going through uh, and I saw the amount of comments that had been uh, marked as spam uh, from YouTube uh, by many of you that had actually been chiming in. And I had thought like, oh my gosh, I had like no comments on one of these you know videos that I did about a transplant. I was like, oh my gosh, was like nobody even cares to chime in about this. But I had so many that were marked as spam. It was unreal. So if you are unable to leave one here, um, you know, go on over to my Rumble and and leave the comment over there where you won't get censored. It'll actually get posted because uh, I have my Rumble account there too, guys. I mean, I post these videos there, and it's kind of my backup too, uh, in case uh, you know YouTube you know throws me out of here. So I just want to throw that in there uh, because of this topic that we're going to be talking about here today. So you have the Medical University of South Carolina, Musk. It was on February 1st that they made this announcement saying that they had removed 23 patients, 23 patients that were either already uh, scheduled to get their transplant. Again, this is for multiple different types of transplants had already been scheduled or were on the list in various positions too, whether they're the first, whether they were at the bottom, wherever they were, took them off the list because they refused to get the jab. Now, Reportedly, also, it was said that they convinced dozens of others to get in line and take the jab in order for them to go ahead and receive their transplant. These are people that didn't want to do it, but they convinced, according to the report, several dozen more to do that. Now, what we don't know right now at the time is, are we going to get to a place with this where this also includes the booster? Because why not, right? I mean, as they continue to come out with new boosters and new all this stuff, I mean, they're going to have a million of them, right? Uh, will this then be the requirement as well for the transplant? Will the regimen for you, to, for whatever it is that you need, be required that you get all these boosters? This is what these people of South Carolina were facing when they were removed from this list. Now, we're assuming this was just for the regular two dose. But regardless, this is in South Carolina. The day after... This announcement was made on February 2nd. You had a lawmaker who serves there in the Congress by the name of Ashley Tramther. She comes out and immediately puts together a piece of legislation that would effectively ban hospitals, any sort of medical, you know, health, you know, officials, anybody from banning anybody from having a transplant for not taking the jab. Not only could they, would they stop them from that, but they would not be able to take them off the list. This would be completely up to the individual receiving the transplant, whether or not they wanted to take the jab. It would not be dependent upon what the hospital wants. Good on her for having the guts to introduce a piece of legislation like this. We need more states to do this. Oh, and there's more to the bill as well, and I'll address that in a second. But first, guys, let me chime in and mention, if you are able to make a generous donation here to my ministry to help support what I do, I greatly appreciate that. I'm demonetized on YouTube. They don't support me, but if you guys want to send a direct message to them and say, you know what, you may not support it, but we enjoy his content talking about end-time Bible prophecy headlines, you guys can help me out over on PayPal. I have that link for you down below. Or if you prefer Patreon, you can sign up there for as little as five bucks a month. When you do that, you get my bonus content. Plus, I also include the links to the YouTube videos there so you get all the alerts when the new content arrives because YouTube's not going to alert you guys every time the new content comes out. It's just not going to happen. 
Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm on Rumble. So uh, go check that out. All those links down below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. But also a part of this bill, it would also ban insurance companies from discriminating against people for not taking the jab. I mean, they would not be able to deny you coverage for your transplant because you didn't get the jab. So it's going to target these two specific areas. Now, this bill already has 26 co-sponsors. The only thing that we're waiting on right now is a response from South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster, which, you know, has been a little bit of a proven rhino. So it's a little worrisome as to far as whether or not McMaster would actually sign this piece of legislation into law. As of right now, he has not commented on the matter, but Republicans have the numbers uh, in both the House and also the Senate. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the bill would sweep through without an issue. We know that rhinos in state legislatures have often prevented, uh, not specifically bills like this, but other types of legislation that uh, more specifically protect workers from having to take the jab to protect their jobs um, that we've seen, you know, fail. And then they have to kind of, you know, you know, have to compromise and say, okay, well, we'll just put in a bunch of extra exemptions for you in your workplace instead. We've seen that happen in several states. One of those states being Florida, the other one now Indiana. And I've reported on those before in the past as well. But Ashley was great. The way that she spoke up about this, she said, look, it's not going to stop at the organ transplants. As they continue to get these jabs approved for the lower and lower age groups, and she says, you got to know this, it's coming for the for the babies soon. They will, at some point, require you to have the jab for any you know, minor or major surgical procedure. She's absolutely right when it comes to that. Imagine if you break your arm and you need to have surgery. Well, they'll deny you surgery because you didn't get the jab, because you won't take it. Or what if you need to call 911 for a reason, for whatever that may be? And the first question they ask you is, have you taken the jab? I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but look, as we're in the last days, these things that sound crazy to us, you know, thinking with a normal mind, uh, you know, are going to be very real. Because the thing is, evil is going to continue to erupt everywhere. And one of those ways it's going to do that is through the medical field. And messing with people in this way, saying that if you don't comply, if you don't get in line, well, then you can basically D.I.E. Okay. So these are bills. These bills are very important. I hope that this can pass in South Carolina. I genuinely do. Am I confident? Mm. We'll see. But, but even if, let's just say that the bill doesn't pass. Okay. This is where you really have to learn to trust God. You really need to believe because you see, for so long, people have thought that God doesn't do the miraculous anymore. He doesn't heal anymore like he used to. When you dare to start believing, and if you're close with God in that, and you're praying, and you're in the Word, and you're doing all the things you know to do, see, God can come in the middle of your situation. If you're someone that needs an organ transplant, why not have the faith to believe that God can do the transplant for you? You don't need to go to the hospital. If they're denying you because you won't get the jab, God can give you a new liver. God can give you a new kidney. God can give you a new heart. God can just mend the ones you already have now. But so many people don't want to think that way. Like, why would he do that? Because it says in his word he will do that. That's why. And I think we're going to hear stories about this as, we can, as this world continues to get darker, and it's going to get darker, but at the same time, I feel that we're going to be hearing stories of miracles happening too in various places around the world, not just the United States, but everywhere. But do you have the faith to believe that God can do that for you? That's the question. You know, this article was a great uh, piece, and I'm going to put it down below for you in the description if you'd like to read it. But in order to... You know, ensure that you know you can experience these miracles, and God, and God can do a miracle for anybody. Don't get me wrong; you don't even have to be saved. But at the same time, you're going to need to have a close personal relationship with Jesus Christ to navigate these days that we're in right now. And if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, well, I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to accept Christ. We do this on all of our videos, and 
you could do this in your own words, but I'll give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. Here's the first thing you want to do right off the top. It's to acknowledge that you're a sinner. Now, it's something that we all are, but God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. And repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles or habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He wipes that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you, there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you guys down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.